There are many ways to draw inside of Adobe Animate CC, and I'm going to show you one of my favorite ways using mostly primitive tools in combination with object drawing mode, snap to objects, and a little bit of editing with the selection tool, which is the black arrow up here on top. Now the first thing I want to do is to make sure that I can see all of the available tools in my toolbar as well as their subselection. So I'm going to just click and drag the left edge to create two columns as we see here. Now I can see everything that the toolbar has to offer. Now I want not just the rectangle tool but the rectangle primitive tool. So I long press to bring that other option up and I'm going to select rectangle primitive. Now you'll notice in properties panel I have a rectangle options section and the slider, which is currently at its default setting of zero, what that does is allows me to adjust how the corners look on the primitive I'm going to create. So let me actually set this back to zero just to show you. I have a skin tone here I already like, um, but I'm gonna make a shape for you and just kind of give you an idea of what this option does here, this slider. So if I just click and drag that, you'll notice the corners of my shape will change and adjust accordingly. If I slide the slider all the way to the left, the corners invert. And if I slide it all the way to the right, I get the most rounded corners. Okay. Having said that, let me actually delete this and start over. What I like to do is grab this rectangle tool and before I do anything, slide that all the way to the right to a value of 100. And I'm going to start by drawing the character's head. And next I'm going to move on to the eyes. And for that, I'm just going to grab the oval tool. I'm going to click on the fill color here and I'm just going to grab black. Now the one thing I want to make sure of is down here is I want to turn on object drawing mode. You'll notice that it has a container around it now because it's now an object drawing. So what this allows me to do is work entirely inside of one layer, which is actually kind of nice. Let me zoom in here. So let's scale this down. I'm just going to grab the free transform tool, which is hitting Q on my keyboard or selecting it up here from the tools panel. And let's scale this down a little bit. One way I like to work, which is nice and quick, is to hold down Shift and the Alt key. Holding down Shift and the Alt key allows me to click and drag to duplicate that and move it along the same axis. And while we're at it, I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to add a little bit of highlight. So for the mouth, I'm going to grab the oval tool again and a nice deep red for the inside of the mouth. Something like that. What I'm going to do is double click the object drawing and you'll notice now I was not scene one but now I'm inside the drawing object that I just created. I'm going to use the black arrow which is the selection tool and just draw a marquee allowing me to select the top half of the circle. I hit the delete key on the keyboard and there I have deleted the top half of the symbol and now I have my mouth. But what I want to do is also create teeth. With the selection tool, I'm going to click and drag again, but this time I'm only going to select about the top third of this mouth and click on the fill swatch and select white. And now you'll see it's updated and fill that selection in with white. And now I have my teeth. If you want to add a tongue, it's easy to do. Let's mix a color first. Again, with the selection tool, I'm going to click now from the bottom, working my way up, and select about that much of a region of this mouth symbol. And let's click here and then find that color. And now we have a tongue. And again with the black selection tool, the black arrow tool, I'm going to actually click anywhere along this line and bend it up a little bit. Now let's move on to the hair. Let's mix a nice color, uh, dark brown, let's say. And let's make a nice big circle, something like that. And like we did with the mouth, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Double click and select the bottom half. Delete. And we have bangs. Now if you want to add a little bit of variation to these bangs, I'm going to double click using the black arrow tool. I'm inside the drawing object again. I'm going to click and drag upward from the bottom to select this region here and hit delete. Right, so now I've created an, an interesting shape and when I turn on snap to objects, and let me zoom in, and I go and I click and drag one of these corners, you'll notice that it snaps to the other corner. Once I get close enough to another vector point, it'll snap together. 
Essentially, it's joining those two points together to create one. And we can repeat this as many times as we want to create more variations in our hair. It's up to you. And then holding down the Shift and Alt key, clicking and dragging, which will duplicate it, making the other ear. And let's make the hair behind her, the back of her head. I'm going to use for this, again, the rectangle primitive tool is what I want. I'm going to grab the same color as the hair that we already have. And I'll show you how to arrange things later, but let's create a nice big shape for the back of her head. Now, what I want to do is go to Modify, Arrange, and Send to Back. And we have her hair. The rest of the features of this character are all comprised using the primitive tools, such as rectangles and ovals. And then from there, using the selection tool to select different regions of these simple shapes to either delete them or while they're selected to change their color, whether it be shadow or highlight, whatever you see fit. For the shoes, I created just simple ovals, cut them in half, and then used the line tool to create a stroke for the sole of her shoe. And she's done. So you can see how quick and easy it is to work this way using primitive tools. It's also, it's a nice, easy way to draw even if you don't have any kind of pressure sensitive drawing tablet or maybe you're on your laptop and you're using a trackpad, um, you can still achieve kind of really cool results uh, this way. Hope you like it. The brush tool has been enhanced in Animate CC. And I'm just gonna walk you through some of the ways you can control the brush now. And so with the brush selected, in properties panel, you'll see I have a cool slider for selecting the size of the brush. And not only that, I have a slider for setting the minimum size of the brush. So now when I draw, I'm, I'm making good use of that pressure sensitivity. So if I increase the size of the brush and, um, and you know play around with the minimum size of the brush, you can see how that plays an effect on the stroke. And so what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to grab, um, um, turn on object drawing mode. And I'm going to mix a little bit of transparency into this black color. I'm going to do this because what I'm going to do is just sketch out something first. And I kind of like to draw this way if I'm just sketching something. So let's draw, um, let's just create a character. And this is for me, um, with the transparency mixed in, it kind of gives that nice feel of, of like using pencil. Especially when you have um, the combination of alpha and object drawing mode on. You can see the layering of transparency. Okay, so I've got a, a nice little character roughed out here. And so now what I like to do is actually go and create on um, frame 2 a blank keyframe. It's going to hit F7 and then turn on onion skin. And now I can see a ghost of my image and I'm going to now do sort of a cleanup version of this drawing. I'm going to remove the alpha transparency. I like the brush um, size of 8 with the minimum size of 0. And if I want to save this as a preset, I can just click this little plus button here. And that saves this as a preset. I continue to press the plus button. And those will be saved as presets and use them later just by clicking on them. So now I'm going to redraw and clean up my drawing in frame 2. I'm going to turn off object drawing. I'm going to do everything in this one frame. I might make a few design changes along the way, but for the most part, I'm going to just stick to the drawing at hand as we have it. So now what I want to do is grab, make sure the brush is selected, which it is, and the sub selection tool, instead of painting normal, as you'll see here, I'm going to select paint behind. I'm going to make a pretty big brush. And I'm just going to actually freehand paint this. And by choosing paint under, it's painting underneath the existing strokes. And again, with brush tool selected, the sub selection tool that we want to use is paint inside. And what this is going to allow me to do is once I click down on an existing fill color, wherever I paint, it's only going to paint inside that fill color. So this is a nice, handy, quick way to add some shadows and shading to characters. And now let's mix a little color for her eyes. And while this is selected, let's add a little bit of depth to her eyes. Again, brush tool. I'm going to paint inside just like that. 
Let's mix in a nice dark brown, maybe a little bit of red in there. Make a nice big brush. Let's make sure we're painting behind. Now we can be pretty loose. Now let's add a little bit of depth to her hair. So let's make some highlights. Just make a lighter, makes a lighter version of that. Brush tool is selected and let's say, let's paint inside as our sub selection. Actually, here's a cool, um, here's another cool sub selection feature. If we select the brush, let's choose as a sub selection, paint selection, and then select just the hair fill. Now, wherever we paint, we'll only paint inside the color that is selected. And this time I am going to go back to painting inside. So what I'm going to do is select this shape, hold down shift and select a little bit more of that fill. Grab the paint brush tool and then I'm going to choose as my sub selection paint selection. And now I can draw her eyebrows in without worrying about overlapping the line of her hair right there. And that's just some of the ways you can use the brush tool to draw or paint inside of Animate CC.